We often look up to the pros as the pioneers of the sport. I mean, they get all the latest tech first. They have the science, the resources, the experts to improve their performance on the bike. And well, they do go quite a bit faster than us. So you think the pros would use any bit of tech possible to maximize speed and performance. But quite often, this isn't actually the case. So we thought we'd highlight a few bits of tech the pros should use, but don't. Tubeless tires have increased puncture protection, there's less rolling resistance, they're more responsive, and they're lighter than clinchers and tubular tires. However, in the pro ranks overall, the tire of choice is still the tubular tire. Pro teams have dabbled with tubeless tires. Philip Gilbert actually won the 2008 Het Volk on tubeless tires. However, it does seem that it's been hard to persuade pro teams, who can often be quite conservative in their attitudes, to switch from their beloved tubulars. I myself was actually very nervous when we tried using tubeless tires on my team in 2017. I think my main worry was that I still wanted to be able to ride a flat if I punctured, and I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to do this with tubeless tires. Also, if I did flat, I didn't want the tire to roll off the rim, leaving me riding on the rim in a busy peloton, especially on those cobbled races. Now, it could be this, which is the reason people are a bit hesitant of trying tubeless tires, and it could also be that everyone's just used to using their beloved tubeless. But if I was a pro now, I would definitely use tubeless tires. The benefits are incredible and very noticeable. And you know what? I've ridden a tubeless tire on a flat for quite a while. Less said about that, the better. But I tell you what, that tire was not coming off that rim. It wasn't going anywhere. Okay, right, I think this is gonna be a controversial one, but bear with me. Deep section wheels offer a huge aerodynamic saving. For example, a 95 mil rim can save a massive 35 watts over a 40 kilometer TT, which is a huge saving. But given the choice, many pros still opt for a shallower rim when racing. Now there are a couple of potential drawbacks to a super deep rim, which may explain this. So a super deep rim will be a bit harder to handle in a crosswind. And also they will be a bit heavier than a shallower rim profile. Okay, right, wait because let's look at the difference in weight of the same wheel set, the Vision Metron, but in different rim depths. Okay, so the Vision Metron SL wheel set with a 40 mil rim depth weighs 1,450 grams. And the same wheel set with an 81 mil rim depth weighs 1,740 grams. So that's only a 290 gram difference. So okay, 290 grams is something. But when you consider that UCI weight limit is 6.8 kilos, the total bike cannot weigh less than 6.8 kilos, which is quite easy to get under these days. You think that maybe, you know, you'd opt for a slightly heavier, but more aerodynamic wheel set, which would still bring your bike to that 6.8 kilo limit. I mean, everything on a pro bike these days is designed with wind cheating properties in mind. To go as fast as you can in a pro race, you want to be as aerodynamic as possible. Which begs the question, why wouldn't you use deep section wheels all the time? Now, I'm not saying pros don't use super deep rims at all. They do. But plenty of times, we see pros using shallow rims when there's no wind at all. I mean, they'll have a choice of using different rim depths before they start the race. They just have to inform their mechanic. And it begs the question, why don't we see pros using super deep rims all the time? Maybe just selecting those shallow rims on the really windy days. Now, admittedly, many riders have embraced the benefits of aerodynamics. Gone are the baggy jerseys of yesteryear. And instead, we now have riders racing in a skin suit or race suit. And it's the go-to jersey of choice if you want to slip through the wind in a race. Now, it was a little slow to catch on though, with many riders turning their nose up at racing in a skin suit at first. I mean, maybe it wasn't quite stylish enough, or maybe it was a thought of riding 300 kilometers at Milan San Remo in a skin suit, which would make riders wince. These days though, a good quality race suit is just as comfortable as a pair of bib shorts. And if I'm honest, sometimes it's even more comfortable. Your body is the largest object hitting the wind. So wearing a race suit has huge aerodynamic benefits. Although sometimes we still see pro riders racing in a jersey and shorts. You think they'd always opt for the fastest option when given the choice, which is the race suit or skin suit. Although 
I guess it doesn't matter if they still win at the end of the day, does it? Tire sealant is another tech advantage that we don't see the pro teams talking about all that often. Some teams do use it and shout about the benefits, of which there are numerous. For a small increase in weight, puncture protection becomes astronomical. Now, you think pros would always want to use this. You know, having the insurance that you won't get a flat is a massive advantage when you're going for the win. Using tyre sealant adds around 30 to 50 grams per tyre. But I think, you know, this is a minimal difference when you look at the added puncture protection you do get when using sealant with a tubular, especially on the cobbles of Northern Europe. Now, some teams do use tyre sealant, but it isn't something that I think that's used across the board. I think it's kind of one of those ones where pros hear about the small weight gain and shake their heads. They don't want to try it. When really, I think it's kind of like a no brainer. I'd use tyre sealant every time if I could. Disc brakes have divided the peloton since their first win in a Grand Tour, when Marcel Kittel walloped home to victory to take stage two of the 2017 Tour de France. We all know of the benefits of disc brakes by now. Better braking control, especially in the wet. Less force needed on the lever when you're braking. No heating of the rim when you're braking. And also better braking modulation. Yet arguably the best team in the world, INEOS, still use rim brakes. Now, integration of disc brakes onto road bikes has vastly improved in recent years. And many teams have adopted disc brakes as their go-to braking system. So you'd wonder why INEOS haven't done the same when the benefits are clearly there. Although, it's not just INEOS. If you look at the recent edition of Strada Bianca, four out of the six riders on the men's and women's podium all used rim brakes. Maybe it's just that riders feel more comfortable with the braking system they have always used and don't feel the need to change over to a new braking system just yet. Or it could be that rim brakes still offer a faster wheel change in a race and you know you have a better chance of getting a spare wheel from your team car or neutral service more importantly if you're on a rim brake bike maybe it's something that we'll see change in the future but for the moment it's a bit of tech that pros should use but they don't right okay bike computers and i'm not trying to argue that pros don't use a bike computer they do what i'm trying to say is that when so many top quality bike computers exist pros when they're racing mainly use their bike computer simply to view metrics such as distance, time, and maybe their power data when they're in a race. We still see plenty of pros writing down the race stats on their stem on a little sticker on their bike. Would it not be easier for them to have their team manage create a really detailed GPX file before the race and then upload that to their bike computer so they can see everything that's coming up on the course, you know, when the feed zone is, when the key climbs, or any information like that. They can have it all there on the GPX file right in front of them on their computers, not on an old bit of sticky tape on their stem. They'd be able to see route information really easily. Things such as wind direction, when the feed zone is, blind hairpins that are coming up, key route information that is so important when you're racing. But you know, many pros don't really do this. It doesn't seem like a sort of priority. It seems like a bit of a second thought. And the biggest question, why? You know, some pros do use it in this manner, but it's not a blanket practice. So. Bit of tech pro should use, but don't. Right, that's my list. Thanks for watching everyone, but please let me know in the comments section below what might I have missed. Maybe some F1 style race radios that are super small, not like the big chunky things that you put in your bib shorts and weigh you down. Interesting to hear all your suggestions, so please let me know. Right, I'm off for a bike ride, so I'll see you all soon.